Welcome back to Why Would You Do That Pool Edition, or Why Would You Be Bothered Pool Edition. Got ourselves here a dirty old 2050 pool. Uh, she's about 25 years old and been here down in Australia. And haven't been, none of these have been sold since the early 2000s. The supplies are quite a few of these old girls kicking around for some odd reason. I know these are the, just chuck them in the bin, jobbies in the States, but it's in the last year. Don't know why. There's no real aftermarket parts or anything by anybody here in Australia that look after these. You can get your standard parts from Husqvarna and stuff like that. They'll get you there. The oil things, but been an early Electrolux um, pulling. They're a little bit uh, on the fit on the ground, as in parts wise, but they're still stuck and kicking around. Got about four of them myself. I know of two in the wild, which is still happily going up for 20 years and nothing but hard Australian hardwood, so they seem to survive out here just fine. Anyway, this video is about. Um, Basic um, mods you can do on these little critters. At the moment, you know, they've got the standard foam type filter, which is nothing but a pain in the wear, but there's your factory air filter. And um, this mod is a conversion to run a flocked air filter of a, what was this one off? A um, 2002. Uh, 33cc Ranger, Roby Ranger, uh, Mexican made, which I picked up the other day with a um, seized ball on it. Oddly enough, what actually was seized in it was the the bearing waist that guy, one of the uh, the shield, the bearing shield inside, which holds the waist in. They came they came loose and stuck itself between the bit and the piston and the ball. But you know, parts of them are non non existent. Now yeah, though which are which are odd though because they had the better cylinder being plated cylinder than these being unplated. But this one's twenty five years old and still pulling uh, hundred and sixty PSI, so I'm surprised. <coughs> anyway, I'll bring the camera in a bit so you can see exactly what happens here. Because it there's a little bit of work you can do, but some things some things you really don't need to. I wouldn't be over more because I okay. can. No, where's the camera? And zoom out. But uh, the ba basic air filters on these sit straight in on top there, as you can see. And the basic switch would sit through there. You can. You can get this stuff, this this critter to work with it, without pulling the original thing out, the original uh, switch, because yeah, you can call it a switch. Moving movable contact, more of the point. But um, I I want a little bit better, a nice waterproof switch, and I had to do a little bit of bodge jobbing inside to get it done, but. It works. I can't argue with it. But but basically, I um, one of these uh, UT. Uh, I forget. I'll put it in the um, comment in the thing down below. Uh, these air filters off it of those um, off those ranges. Do you can just get them in? They fit and they just just go in. So what I do is I put the camera back and I'll tr screw it back on. Beautiful. Let's have a look. One thing I give these old girls, they're surprisingly robust. I have heard whole stories about these, but yet again, these are 25 years later. They're still kicking around. They really can't be that bad. 
I did replace the fuel lines in this as it, as it did needed them. But the biggest kick of cure of these. Uh, your 91 ethanol fuel here in Australia we get 91 95 and 98 your typical 91 is your 10% so is your 95 with a little bit more extra junk in it I guess you can call it that but if you want to run proper fuel not ethanol here in Australia it's you go to go to shell and get yourself 10 liters of VPAL 98 there's no ethanol on it, and they won't eat your lines. I've got a couple of um, 610 Max kicking around the back, and they're still running their original factory black lines on them, and they're just quite happy with them. Oddly enough, even the Chinese one, even the Chinese stores, they don't, if you don't run 91 in them, they don't seem to die, oddly enough. And I've heard all the people just leave fuel, and they go to goo. Can't say I never had that happen on me, but yet again, I don't want 91. I reckon it's absolute crap fuel. And I shall give that a cream before I should put that on. Now you give it a spray. I'm gonna have to pause this and go get some, get the hot spray and clean it. <laughs> give it a bit of a blow. What's the point on putting a dirty filter on? Middle. And I pause. All back, nice and clean. No point putting the dirty one back on now anyway. Let's see how your chocolate looks. But yeah, these things are surprisingly robust. With, with this little mod here on the back here, we'll bring this up to a, um, I guess one of the later up on, uh, I can't say 2150, I'm not really too sure. But it brings it up the same as a Johnson Red 2036 and 2040. And the uh, later Husqvarna's, the um, the 136's, the one, I think the 131's, the 14's and the 141's, whatever they call them. They all use a Fox top air filter. But they are the better saw, but it's still pawns. But they are, they are the better saw. So I actually reckon the uh, Johnson Red beats the Husqvarna in that regard because this has a better air cleaner. I've never seen any dirt in the, in the Johnson, but I've seen um, Husqvarna's when they go in there. The way, the way the carbons are set up, I can't understand why they set them up like that. Well, the Johnson's just a single line, straight to the tank, pump, starts all the time. But those Husqvarna's are a little bit of a pain in the rear. Okie okay, dokie, we've got our air filter on. Got the um, bracket on there, that's on there. Um, that was it. You shouldn't have really much issue getting these on. You might find that the switch out here might be a bit tight. I don't I don't think it was gonna be tight. But uh, I wanted a piece of steel, so I just bent up a piece of steel and put a, a nice waterproof uh, switch on it. Just so a little bit nicer than contact. Uh, yeah, you will. The thing you got to do with these, you don't have to because there's a fair rack of room, is take out these uh, supports. They hold the foam in on the original one, on the original uh, air filter assembly. But a sharp chisel just pump straight out, and a um, or a good pair of pliers because you just snap them. By now, they're 25 years old and just snap out. So. That makes things a lot easier. They do, these will sit on a bit snugger than they used to be, but it's not really much of an issue. Yeah, we'll get him back on. The boot does fit on. It does and ruin are two different things, but here and there. There you go. Okay. It does oddly enough sit on quite nicely. You see, one, two, three screws. But now this is the basic mod you can do to them. I was going to put one of those quick release cowboys on it, with ones you hit and the thing all macros in. 
but that might be too much for the seal for it to click back in. They do have the Ranger carb, which is identical setup in every way, but the uh, this has no indent. I think it might have one as the car as the um, choke opens up, it locks open. Well, on the uh, Ranger, it's got three different positions, but you know, for a choke, I don't think it matters too much. I can't say about the um, trigger lock on these because I never used one. I've got it side on before I go that far. I may have made a bit, made a bit of a whoopsie before I put this back together. The one thing that's nice about these, and most people don't really know, it actually tells you what the light went inside when you have to replace them. <laughs> so you can replace them yourself. Don't see too much of that on all the old huskies and stuff like that. And just think about looking at it. There is another, if you had a bit of a um, real fine uh, type foam, like, like you use in your air compressors, and usually that's the pre-filter form, big open coarse cellular foam. On the ranges, they do shove them in these little holes just here behind it. And um, that seems to stop a lot of the um, thick chunks getting in. But on these girls, because Australian hardwood is real dense and fine, usually you don't really get much conifers and and the pines that you, pines that you're usually cutting them. <coughs> it's a little bit pointless, really. What you get to get out of it? Let's see. Hold on. Yeah. On it. Yeah. Let's see, screw, 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 screw. This is the part where I lose all the screws. No, that's not it. And that's one. Where are the other four little buggers? Two, three, four. Middle. It's always a bit fun trying to put screws in, especially trying to find them when you're about three cans in. <laughs> and this wonderful Saturday during lockdown. <laughs> it is, what was it, 20 past, oh, was it 15 past, um, Nine, so this will not be started up this evening, but I'll do a later video probably tomorrow if I get around to it. When this is starting up, and this is, she is a bit on the noisy side, she's noisy than the husk, uh, than the Johnson Red, and was more noisy than the old uh, Chinese chainsaw I had uh, a while ago. Xenowin, what are they, they call them? These knockoffs. Which for well, being a free saw at the time, brand new free saw, it went like stink. Let's see, go on. And while my tight, ah, uh, I know I meant, I've got to put that in underneath the thing. That would have been smart of me. See, there's no perfect outtakes here. We're gonna stuff it up. Well, I'd rather stuff it all the way than not fuck it up. And even demonetized. Come on, you bugger. Now I've got to put one of these back together. I'm more careful when I've got this clip down in the bottom of this, and I'm pulling the whole thing apart to get it out. Gotcha. Yeah, make sure these do go in. The last thing you want flying around a cage at a thirty at twenty thousand weapons or eleven thousand weapons in this case, they're not really that hungry fast little hungry saws. If you are wondering why these are fat little suckers, they look like a bit of like a pregnant whale. Uh, these are off the um, 
they're the same flywheels or it's off the leaf blowers and the um the small ring backers. Why they look like as fat as they are. I guess you've already got the parts there, you might as well use them. But the next model of saw, I think they go up when you start getting more later on, you end up getting um, a proper flywheel with them. They go for a standalone job. That only is a normal John's up. Uh, when you see the video of this to, probably tomorrow, I may get around to it. Um, the crutch is needs to be replaced on it. It is lowered out like no end. But during lockdown here in Victoria, uh, can't really go out and get one. But oddly enough, they've got two of them down at the um, dealership in, in Hastings. What's the dealership in, in Hastings? So. Uh, Nice to see they still carry parts of these old girls. That's all wrong. The pipe I will do not um, looks good. Hmm. I made a little flap in there, small detent. Hmm. I guess just to touch it up. Nothing I want's cracking something because I can't get any of these parts anymore. Really. I don't think half the people in the States can even get these parts anymore. <laughs> Especially not if you're not living up the top of um, British, Cro British Columbia. Really. Where you can end up living. And you are wondering, it is grass reinforced plastic in this. Probably enough, it is supposed to be tough for uh, plastic in it. But these don't really, go, unless you leave them out in the sun, they don't go brittle here really much in Australia because we don't really get the snow. Oh, it gets cold here, you know, the other week was only down to 6 degrees uh, next week. But being Victoria, you can, you can go for a drive half an hour that way and you'll snow. Fun fact, Australia gets more snow than, uh, than Switzerland. But you don't have that in the fly, do they? Let's see. There's your air cleaner box modification. It's not difficult, not really a difficult thing to do. If you had an old Ranger or an old whatever, it's a good way to bring the saw up to a, certain spe a different spec. The fox is all I need to clean, but you should these sponges, you can always find these. Dust always seems to creep around them over a period of time and eventually come, lo come loose. I don't know why they went that way, I guess it's cheap. Well, that's your first mod. <sighs> Mine and my coke. Fitting on the side. <sighs> and here's second and third basic mods for these. I'll make this quick, I ain't got much time left for my thing. Oh. Johnson Red 2030 Husqvarna 141 uh, dogs will fit these. And a simple shotgun style exhaust deflector. 
I might have to stop the video and do it and start again <laughs> before I run out of time. Alright, part two, because phone decided if phone was going to do what phone does best. Not work. <sighs> Light on the subject. Another thing you can basic, um, what you can do on these. Punch a hole on the side. You can buy these, I believe. These side deflectors, they use them on Steels and Huskies. I think Duke sell them or something similar. But, you know, me being a cheapskate, so, and being, you know, some 600 miles away to, in order to buy one, it's an expensive to ship stuff, you know, a free dollar part US is about only 20 bucks to ship it. So, make what you got to do. Um, made a basic hole, punch in the side, open up all the, open up all the, um, the, uh, the, uh, was it the break inside? This is usually a middle insert. Ditch the um the spark rester because that's usually crud. But on these, they actually discharge up around the back there. I left I left that in the um in the original muffler setup. So later I could punch it. If I had to close it up, you can punch them in at the back here. To close the close the holes up, but I end up leaving it because it seems to work just fine. It doesn't seem to mount anything, and and most of your pressure's coming out the front here. Because when I got this, the saw was clean inside. There's no scoring or saw this age, oddly enough. But there was that much crap at the back there. I'm surprised she ran. <laughs> but I'll get to a bit. Uh, let's see. I'll get to the dogs now because the video before was a bit short. Well, The standard dogs here, they are off a uh, Johnson Red 36. They're 20, sorry, 2036 uh, turbo, and the same as the um, Husky 136. They're all pretty much the same sort, all 33cc, 30, 33, 36cc sorts, pretty much. You know, when when Porn, well, when Husqvarna bought Porn, uh, that's one thing Hasvana can never seem to do is make standalone small saws decent. Don't know why, but the old pawn can do it. There, there ain't there ain't no XXVs, but that's a story for another time. Which I've got two of them kicking around, which I end up gotta put back together. But now they bolt straight on, you will have to get screws for them. The hole's already here. Uh, I think I'm lucky I had a couple of screws out of an old Talon weed whacker, so it goes straight in. Not much of an issue there. But yeah, that's. Oh, it's a bit loose. But, um. Oh, that, that's, you can see, it's a crap. Crutch, crutch drum in it. Uh, this is off the Craftsman, it's pretty much nearly the same. Actually, actually, I'll pull apart later and see if I can fit it. But, uh, yeah, about 29 bucks here to Australia to replace them for one of these. So, gives me something to do. But, oddly enough, it is identical crutch and how they set up. So, might try that and see if these might, or what the springs are like, in case these are released early or later. I'm curious if they'll let, if you can get them to start different. But yeah, that, that's your standard pawn 2150 uh, mods you can do on these. Nothing really fancy. They do the job. I ramble a bit. <laughs> but they'll, they'll do the job. Cut your wood. Leave them back of the ute. Or pick up if, if you've got that sister size vehicle. And they should treat you well. This one treated the previous owner very well. He always kept it somewhat clean because I got this as a pickup with a um a an old uh, 38 XXV with an American made uh, chain brake on it. Oddly enough, because uh, you'll see a lot of pawns here in Australia with chain brakes. We never really import. We do have them, but this is 1981 and it's got chain brakes. The rules here might be a little bit more uh, stricter on on this. And oddly enough, and no stickers on them. I don't know why. I 
I can't seem to find any sticker on it except for on the side. Oh, but it comes with a UL listing and the Australian sticker, where usually the American sticker will live. And it's it's not missing on this one. I've never seen one with one. Uh, I'm, it's 9.30 here. I'm going to bed. Well, go inside, fish, drink, then go to bed. And uh, I'll do a video on this in the morning when I get around to it. Catches.